I know that Buffy herself is very beloved and the series is very iconic, but I've tried to be very careful with the rating system and only giving the season that deserves it a really good amount of points and the seasons that don't deserve it low points. But perhaps people think I'm just being critical to be critical. No, I'm trying to be fair. Well, we can, I think, thankfully be a little less critical with this season because season five, by far, is perhaps one of the best seasons of all time in American television. I do know British television a little bit and some other forms of television, but by far, this is incredible. I'm going to give it a 8.5. It's incredibly good. So what is happening? Well, essentially, much of the season is Buffy interlocked with a certain female antagonist. I cannot even say who the antagonist is called. That would be a spoiler. But the antagonist provides a lot, a lot of good drama as well as a real challenge to Buffy. And that really does a good job of structuring most of the season. But now we're going to have to get into the bad points and sort of where the season doesn't make a lot of sense and there are some issues. Perhaps the most profound issue, and I do have to say this right at the beginning, it's not much of a spoiler, is that Buffy suddenly seems to have a sister called Dawn. And if you paid attention to the series, you're sort of like, wait, how is this possible? How did that happen? And a lot of the mystery of Dawn at the beginning is fine, but when the revelations sort of start to come in terms of answering, well, who is this person or how did this happen? They're not very satisfying. And in fact, they kind of contradict how the antagonist works. So I don't think they thought through the plot as well as with Dawn as well as they should have. And this is not Michelle's fault, but it is very annoying because she just basically screams and is a victim for most of the season. So Dawn is kind of a wasted character. She has some good moments with Spike and their relationship, I thought, was very intriguing. But otherwise, it's not much there. They also do a very good job of building up, I can only call it the incident. There's an incident involving a very big Buffy character, and I think that was built up very good. I don't actually like the body myself. I'm against the fan consensus. I just don't think it's that good. But the way it's slowly built up, I thought was very, very well done. But now the downside is, besides Dawn, is that you're going to see a lot of little contradictions in terms of the plot. Props don't make sense or don't work at certain points, you're going to see the stunt doubles very clearly. Like in certain shots, it's going to be very clear that it's not James Marsters, it's not Sarah Michelle Gellar. So they made a lot of continuity and editing errors. And I know a lot of people are like, I, I don't really care about those things, but they are there. And in addition, it's very ironic because one of the early episodes is a Joss Whedon episode, but it's not very good. So the filler episodes are not too bad. They don't drag down the score that much, but they don't help the season. So overall, the score has to be lower because, again, there are a lot of imperfections and they sort of do add up. But the good part is they don't do that much to detract from the overall season. The more major problems are the antagonist because she does pose a lot of interesting challenges to Buffy. So in order to sort of impede her quest, because she has a certain goal, which is very interesting and very well thought out. However, to sort of stretch out the season, they have to give her a huge amount of weaknesses. And a lot of those weaknesses make no sense, and they sort of create issues for other characters because she influences how they're going to act. So there's a lot of pausing and going back in the episodes and sort of like, well, why aren't we moving forward? And the answer is, well, we can't finish the antagonist story just yet. So, in fact, there's a really great, funny episode near the end, and it is really great. And I, I can't even say how the basic plot, because that's a spoiler, but it involves Spike. And it's incredible, but it doesn't make sense tonally because things are supposed to get very, very tragic as they do in terms of the final episodes, but they have this very funny episode sticking out. There's just a lot of issues in terms of the antagonist is great and Claire Kramer's acting is amazing. She and James Marsters perhaps do the most amount of great acting. I'm not slighting Sarah Michelle Gellar. I think she's a very good actress, but her parts here are not very well developed because again, they have to sort of introduce new people and get rid of some old people. And most of it is well done in terms of the old and new characters who come and go, but Again, Buffy, I think her acting in this one is just a little strange. And in fact, in the penultimate episode, we don't really see Sarah Michelle Gellar because she was doing Scooby-Doo. So there's like a lot of production issues that sort of impeded, I think, her acting. It's just is not as strong as it is in the other seasons. But it's still very good acting. But again, her scripts, when they focus on her, I think were very shallow. Nevertheless, when it comes to the final episode, a lot of things do come together. And if you put aside, again, the plot contradictions, it's an incredibly good episode, and the final moments are some of the most heartbreaking you're ever going to find in any form of television. They're really well done and very powerful. And that acting by Sarah Michelle Gellar there, I think, was incredible. And she does a spectacular job in the genuinely final episode, not the penultimate episode. So overall, very strong score, 8.5. I mean 8.5 in terms of all television programs. We're talking about every single program you can think of, from I Love Lucy to Star Trek. That's how good this season is. 
but there are a few disappointing moments. A lot of places where the plot drags. It is nice and poignant how we say farewell to certain characters. They're not killed off. They just have to leave the season to focus on other people. And there is probably just one really radical problem. Like, in terms of the mythology, they retcon Spike, which I don't like. I don't agree with the retcon. But it's their choice. I think we're going to be arguing over the Spike issue for a long time. That's disputable, but there is one moment, and it is, it is, it's only a small se sequence, but it is radically contradicts everything done in Buffy. I mean, it's incredibly out of character, but it just happens, and they never address it. They never even r respond to the criticism. It's just, yeah, that's a radical contradiction. It's a big contradiction. It's not a small one. And that's it. They just let it happen, and you're like, wow, that's shocking. And then they just move on. So there are some major hurdles in this season but i think most of the fandom would say yeah those are issues but the overall contours of the structure of the season are very strong overall the season is just so strong of all the seasons buffy this is the one i would probably recommend most is that good it is amazing but you have to see some of the earlier seasons to make sense of the drama that will occur but even if you see the minimal amount of episodes there is a huge a huge amount of good acting good performances good stories in this one season alone but the tragedy is it's not going to last, and the final seasons, unfortunately, don't match this in terms of the sheer caliber of quality. So this has been a review, non-spoiler, of Season 5 of Buffy. An incredibly great season with some amazing acting, but a lot of little flaws, and ones, unfortunately, that only get worse as time goes on. Thanks for listening.